Hi, this is PC Roger, and I want to welcome you to this short video on Remote Desktop. And Remote Desktop is a way to access one Windows XP computer from another. It uh, is going to be available in Windows Vista and Windows 7 also, but not prior to Windows XP. And there are some limitations on whether or not you have XP Pro or XP Home and that sort of thing. But let's go over some of the basics. We have Windows XP Professional here, and if you right-click the My Computer icon, and select properties there's a tab here for remote and if you do not have this box checked allow users to connect remotely to this computer remote desktop will not connect to this machine and you can select remote users and they all have to have passwords now by default the administrator does have access but if there does need to be a password on that administrator account or else a local policy uh, will prevent the uh, remote desktop from working. You can try to override that, run into all kinds of problems. It's easiest just to have a password on that account. Now, if you're on a corporate uh, system, this might be uh, checked and grayed out because it might be set at the network uh, or you know, corporate domain level. But if you know that the machine that you're connected to does have everything ready to go, you can get to remote desktop. You can click Start, All Programs, Accessories, and here's Remote Desktop Connection here and you can select that and I typically click the options button open now if you do not uh, have the icon available or cannot find it you can go to the start button and click run and you can type in just as I have there MSTSC don't worry about what it all stands for it's just the program's name and click OK and you'll end up with remote desktop connection that way also this area here the logon settings will change a little bit based on what exact version you have of remote desktop connection but you can simply type in the uh, computer name here you know, test and uh, you'll be asked for credentials when you connect I don't really like the way this works but it uh, that's the way Microsoft's done it and you can then uh, have the opportunity to save the credentials or not save them but you can change a number of things about display and connect in uh, full screen mode or not. Decide which resources like printers and clipboard and sound and keyboard, all that kind of thing. Uh, you can start a program automatically. You can tell it it's uh, you know, a slow connection or you know broadband. And uh, here are some issues that are um, really beyond the scope of this video. But uh, you can click back on the general tab and you can just click connect and if the test computer is available on the correct port which is another issue uh, you can connect to that machine and take it over one of the things that I want to emphasize here is once you get all this stuff set up or someone sets it up for you I like to be able to click save as and create an icon by default it's in uh, my documents and you might just name it whatever the remote computers name is and click save and then if you navigate to my documents from the start button here you can see here's this remote desktop connection name test just right click and drag and then select create shortcuts here and then you'll have a shortcut to that remote icon there and if you accidentally delete the shortcut there you can just create it again and it's not going to be uh, actually deleting the, uh, the saved file itself and then when you and then if you want to press F2 rename it and if you double click it it will bring up the remote desktop to connection ask you, you for your username and password and here you can select to remember my password or not if you're on a shared PC of any kind I wouldn't recommend doing that uh, but if it, if it is your own PC and you've got a, uh, a password protected login you might want to go ahead and do this here we have a little bit older version of remote desktop connection and you'll see it's a little bit different I actually like it a little bit better username and password is right here the domain name or the name of the machine if it's not on a domain option to save the password and this is just very convenient to use apparently this uh, isn't as secure so Microsoft changed to the newer uh, method of doing that but we are, are going to connect to the same machine that we had just been working on here a second ago I'm going to show you you can change the display and ordinarily there might uh, you know maybe it's 1024 by 768 or something but for the purposes of this video or maybe for windowing on the machine that you're working on you can set this down which I'm going to do and then I'm going to go ahead and type in the password and click connect and again we could do a save as and that would then uh, create the icon with all of these settings 
that we want to use. But what I want to show you here is the difference between exiting remote desktop correctly and incorrectly or using even the, the disconnect. Now if you are to just click the X here to end, say I'm all done, that would not be what you want to do. It's the same thing as clicking start and then clicking disconnect. And the purpose of that is to leave the session running. If you had a program, maybe it's a, a report that takes a long time to run, you want to, you want to fire it off and come back, you can click the X or select start and then disconnect and that program will stay running and then when you come back to it it will be wherever it's currently at and uh, that can be very handy but if you are completely done with what you're doing you should select start and then log off now if you do have remote desktop in full screen mode uh, the start button should be the start button on the remote machine but sometimes depending upon how the windows are set up you once in a while can uh, kind of get confused as to which start button it is when I work with remote desktop, I usually try to set it up in a, in a window type situation. And if you want to uh, access like the taskbar or something, you can do that. Um, you want to get the task manager through the taskbar, that can be done. And have the remote machines taskbar. If you just hit control at delete on your machine, it's going to use your local machine and not the remote machine that you're working on. Some of those are just things to be aware of. I'm not going to get into it too much deeper than this, but I want to at least make you aware of some of these topics if you are new to, to remote desktop. So if we start a program here, and this isn't really running, but it's, it's Explorer, it'll illustrate the point, and we just click the X, it tells us we're going to disconnect. If we hit start, disconnect, it'll say, are you sure you want to disconnect? It kind of presumes you know what you're doing then. Say, so, okay, disconnect. And then when I come back to it, You can see that Explorer window is still running. If I'm all done with the working on the remote machine, what I want to do is click Start and then Log Off. And it'll say, are you sure you want to log off? And I will say Log Off. And that's what you want to do when you are completely done working on the remote machine. And then you'll see the remote desktop window will just disappear. Now there are a number of reasons remote desktop may not work. As I have mentioned before, the correct ports have to be open. There are some policies, a lot of different things. If remote desktop is too complicated or not doing the job for you, or if you want to view a remote webcam, or if you want to be able to drag and drop files from the machine you're at to the remote uh, desktop, what you really would uh, be better off doing is looking at a program that uses web-based remote access. And I've got the uh, resolution on this uh, screen set uh, kind of low. And you might want to check out Go to My PC. They have a, a free trial offer, and this program is going to be a lot more trouble-free. That it is, it is not free to use. There is a small cost, but if you do want to access a remote PC from anywhere uh, using any kind of device, it's just going to be a whole lot less hassle than remote desktop. So if you uh, if you have a need for for using this kind of a program often and there are some different circumstances, maybe firewalls to go through, things like that, go to, to uh, goremotepc.com and you can look at the reviews and check out a free trial of Go to My PC. But the purpose of this video, uh, primarily I wanted to show you how to get in and get started with a remote desktop, which is built into Windows uh, XP, and uh, create and save an icon onto your desktop like that to make it easy to get to that PC the next time. So that's it for this uh, video. I appreciate your watching. Please stop by my website, www.pcroger.com. I have a lot of other information there and helpful ways to use your computer. See you there.